In this video, we're going to go through the controller settings for Ghost of Tsushima. Now that uh, the Iki Island expansion of the Director's Cut is out, I think a lot of you that were not playing the Legends mode, the multiplayer mode, but just played the single player, it's been a long time since you've done all the controls in Ghost of Tsushima. And one of the great things about Ghost of Tsushima's main game is that they introduce all the new controls and the, the new stances, like one at a time, slowly. But if you're getting just back into the game, it's quite a, it's quite a lot to remember. So, uh, but it, this, is, this is also good for beginners. We'll start out with kind of the really basic commands. And then we're going to move on to the, you know, more advanced things that involve being deep into the skill tree. Okay, so first off, uh, the quick fire is R1. Fire R is R2. R2 also selects stance. The menu button is the three bar button. Uh, the... L1 button is the block, right? So that's your parry button. And you can leave you can leave that pressed and you're gonna continually block, or if you time it right, then you can get the perfect parry. L2 is aim, right? So L2, R2, that's your firing. Uh, I think that's pretty standard for arrows and, and the like, uh, meet or for ranged weapons. Uh, camera movement is your right joystick, left joystick is your player, movement uh if you want to run or gallop then you press down the l3 button or the the left joystick uh and then to crouch you press down the right joystick or the r3 button uh and then jump is x uh quick attack or assassinate is square dash is circle and heavy attack is triangle Right, and then the if you want to initiate a standoff, uh, so you know you can get resolve and just have that cool cutscene. You press up to call your horse. You uh, on the D pad. You press the left button uh, to heal. You press down, and and photo mode. You press uh, right. I you know I like how they assign photo mode. I've been. Uh, been really annoyed with uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla because you have to press L and R for photo mode and you're often doing that and you initiate it wrong but in photo mode is great in in Ghost of Tsushima. All right so those are the basic ones and I guess the other one is swipe is the guiding wind and gestures and they have here some common of the I think the mythical skills is heavenly strike is triangle and circle at the same time dance of wrath is l1 right one at the same time but i think you have to have resolve to do that so let's go to the the different uh, okay so here's the mythical skills let's try the mythical skills first all right, so the Heavenly Strike, right? Of course, you have to unlock these with story missions, so if you're a beginning player, these are not beginning things, but I'm assuming a lot of people watching this video have already been through the whole game, and you uh, have all these skills. You've filled out the whole skill tree, you've done all the missions, and you have all the mythical skills and all the skill tree skills. All right, so L2 and then left on the D-pad, uh, initiates the heavenly strike and is going to cost you one resolve uh the dance of wrath unleash three consecutive unblockable attacks and inflict high damage i don't even think you have to uh point him in the right direction to do this if you've got that but it's it costs you three resolves so uh this is kind of a big crowd uh thing let's see r1 and then right on the d-pad at the same time and r to choose each target so you do choose your target okay and then uh the third one is the way of the flame right use incendiary oil to ignite your katana so i guess if you're out of incendiary oil you can't 
do this, but I think maybe you just have it continually. I, I can't remember, to be honest. Okay, and so that's up button and then circle to equip. You know, Way of the Flame is like one of the last ones you got, so you didn't get, you get that in Act 3. Uh, so up button and then circle to equip and then right button to ignite the katana. Okay. And they'll do massive damage that way, of course. And then the explosive arrow, R2, and then right on the D-pad to select the longbow, R2 up to equip the explosive arrow. So I assume you have that pressed in, and then R2, L2 to fire, right? You got R2 pressed in, and then you hit L2 to release, right? That's the standard motion so explosive arrows pretty cool doesn't seem like it has any uh it doesn't say what how many uh, resolves it costs so you're seeing him do it okay he how many resolves does he have here he has four it doesn't seem like it costs him any resolve right so way of the flame doesn't show him losing any resolve doing that Jin. uh Dance of Wrath, that will cost three resolves. And then the Heavenly Strike. Heavenly Strike's quite nice if you're you're dealing with a really tough, you know, one-on-one um, -on -one duel. Uh, typically, that's a, a quite nice one with a kind of boss fight. Uh, and then Exploration, uh, there's a... You can just lock on to the guiding wind target in the map it's so charms vanity i don't think those are important um okay so these are evasion techniques so if you hit left left on the d-pad you roll and it also will extinguish burning oh that sounds important uh and then left d-pad left one to dash and strike so a dodging strike dodging slash yeah you know, and I think the one of the kind of the right important things to think about when you're playing Ghost of Tsushima is there's no stamina bar, so he can he can do all kinds of crazy stuff and move fast and dodge and all the other stuff, and there's no cost to that, so you want to do that as much as possible. So uh, sprint strike, you press down the R th R three, which is kind of like you're running, and then. L1 uh, to strike. Let's go back to the. We go to the controls, right? So, yeah, L is camera movement, but right is movement, right? So R is movement. So, if you're running, you, the R3 is the running. So that makes sense. Um, R3 L1, yeah, and then that's the sprint strike. And then the shoulder charge, so when you've got R3 pressed down, then you hit the left D-pad and you have a sprinting bash. Uh, delayed strike, uh, delayed quick attack that inflicts extra melee damage and stagger damage. Hold L1 to initiate pose and L2 to strike. Okay, that's cool. So it's kind of like you spam twice the the l1 button so it's like you're blocking at first but then you strike uh, and then perform a jumping strike from your horse to tackle enemy inflict stagger damage uh l2 fr strike from the the horseback so that's kind of cool so you're jumping off your horse onto him and then the perfect dodge uh at last possible moment to perform him a deadly counterattack so right on the d-pad and then l1 or l2 to counterattack right so perfect dodge but this is a timing thing of course you have to be in the right and so either l1 or l2 to do it uh and then the deflection tree uh, so this is 
this is if you have these skills, right? If you've, uh, or these techniques, if you've earned these techniques, which you probably have if you've played through the game. Uh, parry at the last possible second to perform a deadly counterattack earns a moderate amount of resolve. All right, so R1 right before taking damage, and then left one or left two to counterattack. Okay, so if we're just looking at, so quick attack is L1 and heavy attack is L2, right? So this is kind of, these controls are kind of the opposite of what the controls are for Valhalla. So I'm glad I looked at this. Uh, okay, so, uh, and then uh, unwielding sword parry, parry an unblockable attack from Mongol swords. So attacks marked by blue glinting lines can be parried, right? Okay, so if you see the blue, uh, you can parry if you get the right timing. and. Right. And so if we go back to controls, right, parry is the R1 button if you hit it at the right time. Okay, back to techniques. Deflecting arrows, parry and incoming projectiles while blocking. Okay. And then uh, resolve parry, gain a moderate resolve by using parry or perfect parry. Okay. Uh, and then unyielding spear parry parry unblockable spear attack so there you go you can parry so this is a, these are basically allowing you to parry um, things uh, not this is a perfect parry counterattacks of 20% chance to uh, terrify enemies okay so there you go so if you had a charm of fortune so those are the samurai one here's the stances Okay, so the, the regular stance, so stone stance, uh, so, you know, L2 and hold one to, up to change to the stone stance. Oh no, I guess to change all stances, right? So we got the moon stance, the wind stance, the water stance, the stone stance, right? So you're introduced to these stances like one at a time in the game as you earn them uh, in Act 1 for the most part. Uh, but so the stone stance is for swords, it's got a sword symbol. Water stance is for spears, is it? no, it's for shields. Water stance is for shields. It does look like a shield there. And then the wind stance is for spearmen, and then moon stance is for brutes okay so um heavy attacks deal extra stagger damage so you want to do with the stone stance with swords l2 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 uh, or hold l2 for piercing strike okay uh for water stance l2 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 is shield breaker and then hold L2 and then tap L2 for a flurry strike for the for the water shield stance and for the wind spear stance spear breaker is L2 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 and then hold L2 for typhoon kick that's cool so if you want to kick somebody off a ledge or something typhoon kick uh, in the wind stance and then uh, moon stance effective against brutes right L2 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 is heavy strike, right? And hold L2 for a spinning strikes, right? So that that seems, you know, the so the first basic maneuver seems the same controls for all three or four stances. So for the stone sword stance, batter your foe with two piercing strikes, L2, L2, right? Uh, stone strength of mountains increase stagger damage against swordsmen from all stone dance so that's not any controls you need to worry about full stone full puncture hold l2 and then tap l2 l2 so it's instead of three l2s it's a uh, hold and then tap and then they get a stab in there uh, and then stone momentum uh, does not require any controls okay so water stance shield stance 
So L2 and then tap L2 three times after that. So four of them. Hold L2 and then three taps. Unleash a torrent of four rapid strikes. Uh, strength of Tide, you have uh, more stagger damage. Uh, surging strikes drown your foe in a five, or flood of five rapid strikes. So hold L2 and then L2, 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 L2. So you notice for these stances, it seems like heavy attacks, heavy attacks, right? You, you're, using, you're taking advantage of the stances. You're using heavy attacks, not fast attacks. So when you switch to your stances, then... Um, you know, you, you, so here you go, the Typhoon Kick, hold L2, right, um, so this one doesn't have any controls, and then, yeah, so there, all the controls are just the top one is L2, L2, L2 is Spear Breaker, and hold L2 for your Typhoon Kick if you're in the wind stance against spearmen and then the moon stance against brutes hold l2 and then tap l2 is the whirlwind two fast spinning strikes moon strength of heavens increased stagger damage that doesn't have any controls moon finishing strike third moon stance heavy attack deals extra melee damage and stagger damage and then moon tornado three fast spinning strikes so that's pretty cool so kind of like Whirl in, in uh, The Witcher 3. So L2, then la tap L2, L2. Right, so it's all it's all L2 for the stances, right? So it, it's different combinations of L2. So that's your kind of Cliff Notes version for the stances. Uh, and then uh, the ghost weapons... Um, so you up button and the square to equip kunai and right and then right d-pad to throw so right i guess is where you're so r3 d-pad to throw that's weird okay and then uh, black powder bomb, R2, and then left D-pad to throw, R2, right D-pad to equip, R2, L2 to throw. I think those are, you kind of aim those black powder bombs, they're kind of a lot, a lot more, you see the arc of their throw. Uh, smoke bomb, unleash a dense cloud of smoke, so up D-pad X to equip, and then right to throw. Okay, and then sticky bomb, throw a pitch covered bomb that'll stick to your enemy. Up triangle to equip the sticky bomb, and R, R3 right to throw. And then, um, R2 left to select a wind chime, R2 left to equip wind chime, R2 L2 to throw. So it's kind of like an arrow. It, so the, the wind chime and the, the, the black power bomb, they kind of kind of aim them over an arc and so that's how they work. And then evolving tactics. Okay, so recover health. Uh, Regain a moderate amount of health at the cost of resolve, right? So, uh, X to initiate. Save yourself from defeat when wounded. Cost two resolves, iron will. So if you're dead, I think you get, and you have two resolves, you, you come back to life. Although they're showing he only has one resolve. That's just reviving. Uh, and then standoff, challenge enemies to a one-to-one -one showdown. So triangle to challenge unaware enemies, hold L2, and release when the enemy attacks. 
grants three resolves upon success. Okay, so probably do a lot of standoffs. Um, standoff streak. Press L2 and then L1 as they are swinging grants extra resolve on success. So I assume L2 is for the first guy and then for the second guy is L1. Uh, and then improved standoff strength. After a successful standoff, two enemies will rush in and open themselves to a killing blow. Wait until the enemy attacks. Press L2 or L1 as they are swinging, right? So we wait until they, the guys rush in and grants extra resolve on success. Okay. Not sure how many resolve. You get three for the standoff and then archery. Harness the way of the bow. Hell R, hold R2 to aim and L2 to fire. That sounds right. So R2 aim and L2 fire. That's Those are also opposite of the what we're using for Valhalla. Uh, and then uh, L3 while aiming uh, concentration briefly slow down time while aiming to improve uh, accuracy mental fortitude reduce concentration cooldown by 15 percent improved mental fortitude reduce concentration cooldown by 30 percent okay but that does is that that those were not any commands though right oh right yeah so those last two were not commands okay now we're looking at assassination so l1 near aware and un unaware enemy right um safe landing so right before landing uh, chain assassination L2 to initiate. Okay, so L2 instead of L1. Safe landing, roll just before landing, so left on the D pad. Uh, chain assassination man master, assassinate up to three enemies in quick succession, and you just hit L2. I don't think you do anything more than that. Detect enemies by sound. Uh, so you press uh, the, the pad. Um, far hearing detect more distance enemies by listening with a deeper focus. Stealth hearing move faster while using focused hearing. And then now flashing aura around assassination targets with killer instinct. So those are no, the only thing is you need to press the pad. Uh, and then Shoju assassination, L1 near an unaware enemy, and then ghost stance. All right, you want to know how to initiate ghost stance, right? Uh, so uh, once in the ghost stance, you can kill up to three enemies with deadly strikes. L3, R3 to activate ghost stance, although it has to be charged. Uh, and then strike fear in your enemies so they believe you're more than human. Kill seven enemies without taking damage to enter the ghost stance. L3, R3 to activate Ghost Dance. So L3 and R3 all at the same time. Oh, and look, we're going to get some new unlocks. So there are a few techniques we will get uh, with Jin's Journey. Okay, well, we'll have to figure those out. All right, so I think those are all the controls. We've gone through all the stances, and we've also gone through the the regular controls. Good luck uh, with Ghost of Tsushima. I'm gonna play the it's expansion for Iki Island and the director's cut. I'm Linus Wilson. Subscribe.